wasn't giving me anything. But I was upset because I missed this whole journey. Like when I shot it with ChatGPT for the first time, I, th the one that I showed you on the previous picture, that's actually my first chat with ChatGPT. And getting that response, it's not a perfect response, but it's good enough for me to realize that this changes everything. So we're going from being able to automate button clicks and mouse clicks to actually being able to automate cognitive processes. That means that we can automate anything. There's no limits anymore. We, we, we went across that borderline. Um, and the thing that I missed was, I, I think this is maybe the only th good thing that the US has done in a very long time, science fiction, the era of science fiction. We had Isaac Asimov who defined the, the laws of robotics based on what he wrote, dark by initiated AI uh, research at MIT. And that's basically the foundation for what we're seeing right now. So they saw that we could do this. It's, it's actually possible. We just need to discover it. And then we had Deep Blue beats Kasparov. For me, that was a big thing because my dad was really upset. He was a chess player and he, he didn't like the AI getting better than us. And then I remember actually watching live when they did the, the, the Go finals because that was like chess is easy relatively uh, to go. It's like it's infinite possibilities. Everybody thought, that, oh, but it's about intuition and we're never going to get an AI that can beat that. But what was also fantastic about AlphaGo was that they discovered a way to train things against itself. It just explored, it basically brute forced intelligence. And I think that's uh, kind of amazing. Uh, sorry. Um, and then we had ChatGPT. And now, just a few weeks ago, we had GLM 4.6, amazing open source model, which I know you'll see is live at bariet.ai, who will speak after me here. Um, so what did I do? I actually quit my job the day after getting that message. So I went into Axe Food, where I was working at their customer. Um, I, I tried to ask around also with their data science team, what is going on? What are you going to do? Can I help? And when I didn't feel the right response, I said, okay, I have to quit. I have to start building. So I started building different mobile apps, augmented with AI and vector databases. I was almost more amazed by vector databases and what you could do with that, rather than just looking at what you could do with LMs. Um, one of the things that I built was parenting assistant. Basically a way for parents to just check in and say, how are you feeling? How are your kid feeling? Um, what, what is the problem right now? And then what I did was that I created a vector database with all of the check-ins that existed since before. I allowed it to search those and identify similarities between what was happening and then create a plan out of that. Basically a, a plan for how to respond to the person in the most empathetic way and how to help them to see patterns over time. So this is one of the ways that you can use it. And what I basically did was I created a context thing for, for, for that agent that then was going to talk with the parents. But this was also extremely complex because when you do this, I built mobile apps. And the ones of you who are actually into programming, you know that you can't really run Python in Flutter or even on a mobile phone in a good way. So I started building up a way to do it in AWS instead. I used lambdas and I used uh, uh, AWS step functions to be able to create reusable components that I could use over and over. Because all of these apps, I built five different apps, they were all using kind of the same patterns. But when I was having five apps, suddenly I had over 300 integrations and I couldn't update all of them. Like, how am I going to manage this at scale? Uh, not as a single person. So to solve that, you have to implement a lot of different technologies. Most of you are familiar with some of these, some of you are familiar with all of them, but it's complex. It takes a lot of time to get something production ready. So even if you're building something smooth, it's still, you're going to get it up, you're going to have to learn a lot to be able to do it in a good way. So that's basically what Triform is trying to solve. 
um, I think that we've gotten a long way. Uh, so on our platform, you can basically use something that it's quite similar to Level. I'm going to show you a video soon. We can just type in, I want an agent that does this, or I want an automation that does this. And I think that a valuable part of that is you can use something like Manus. It's a Chinese agent. So you can perform most of the things that you could automate on our platform, but it's going to cost you 100,000 or a million tokens just to get it to go past those little objects. And as soon as you have things that you're repeating over and over and over again, you want the same thing done, then it's a lot cheaper to once use an agent to programmatically create that path. Because then you also get a deterministic outcome of whatever you program. So every time you run that automation flow, if it's something that you're doing often, it's just going to be Python code running rather than putting in and, and using a ton of GPUs. So it's extremely cost effective because you only do it once. And then we've also built a way to be able to scale this. And for me, when it comes to sovereignty, it's not so much about having to keep it inside the house. It's more about what is the house. And the house for me is not the company. The house for me is the EU. So when we're talking about democracy being under threat, for me, it's about EU being under threat. So what we've built is a scalable solution. We're right now using, I know Scaleway was mentioned here. So Scaleway is the supplier that we're using down in France to be able to run most of these things. So we're EU sovereign. We're not Swedish sovereign. We will, of course, adapt and allow you to deploy your own Kubernetes if you're a customer that really, really wants that. But I think for me, the important part is the information. So I want information to be shared within the EU, within our borders. Because right now, the upper hand that, EU, that, that the US has over us is access to information. When we lock that in and we make the confinement too small, we're actually hindering the progress that we need to be able to build models that can compete globally. And then we have the observability as something that we're still working on a lot to get it to actually be good. We have a concept called evaluations that allows the AI to create Python-based actions, just like the rest of the actions on our platform, but they just output an evaluation. So that makes it measurable constantly, every single input. And then you can refine it. So even though you have an AI that builds this for you, we don't have any pre-made components, like Nathan has pre-made components. I call it Nathan, I'm not sure how you say it, NA10. We instead have blank components, and they're programmatically created depending on what your need is. So every component is created as you desire it, or if you want to write it yourself, that's good enough as well. Um, so we have a little demo here. There we go. So basically, when you log in, we're actually using American login right now. It's Discord or, or GitHub that is the standard. You can choose what you want to build. You can write it in yourself, or you can just choose one of our pre-made templates that we have. What happens then is that our AI does research. How would I accomplish this? So in this case, I asked it to build something that goes out and check three different news sources, fetches the information about a certain topic from those news sources, concatenate that into one single process where you have all the information, sends that into an AI agent that then writes you a blog post that is relevant and timely, correct, and then it replies with that. So it's, it's a little bit gimmickal. I mean, you could do this with whatever internal systems you have. You could do this with whatever process that you would want to automate. And then it does the research. It finds the RSS feeds that it should use. It finds the different news sources. And now it's started building one flow. And then it creates the whole flow. It says, this is how it should be done. So you get that architectural structure immediately. And as soon as those are defined with requirements into each of those specific items, then all of them are being developed at the same time. So you have an AI working on each of these components, building the code, testing the code, ensuring that it actually works uh, when it's done. 
And then you can go in and change the code yourself as well if you want to. So you still have the full control. You still have that human interaction in between. So here we see that it fetches news from Google and BBC uh, into all the different ones. And then you can try to run it. In this case, it actually created a not compliant one, so I had to change it a bit. But the topic that I sent in is AI, of course. And then it executes the whole flow, and it feeds you back a blog post. Extremely simplistic flow, but still, if I would program this myself, it would probably take a few days, uh, at least to get it decently working. And in here, you can add in whatever you want. Like, what is the input that you want to get in there? So basically, build it easy, start integrating, drag and drop visual interface, ensuring that you understand what's happening with the AI. What is the AI building right now? And also for each of the components, you get defined. These are the requirements. This is the description. And you also get a documentation of each of the components. So it writes you a readme for each of them. So each of them become reusable components that can be used over and over again in different flows. Um, um, our business model, and this is back again to data. So I think that if we're looking at value, we, we had a few guys here talking about one of the values that we will have for a long time forward. It's about electricity. So that's like, that's key. We're shifting from, I, I, I don't care that we're moving from dollar to yen. I think that we're moving from fiat to electricity. It's about power, <laughs> as it always was. Um, so, the other one, except electricity, is information. By using this structure, when we start serving up or keeping this data, it becomes extremely valuable for us because we can use it to train new models. So thereby, we offer it for free as long as you allow us to train on that data. That's the only condition. Do as much as you want, but let us have the data. If you want to build something proprietary, and you're like, I don't want to share this, this is mine, then you're going to have to pay. And then you're going to have to talk to one of the sales guys back here. But up until then, build whatever magical creations you can and share it with the rest. We already have a few uh, models that are actually ran here in Sweden, uh, 6GAA Sweden that was men mentioned before. Um, so those you can try out. We're also adding in Badiet, so you can use Badiet models on the platform and instruct your models only to use the ones that are compatible with whatever requirements you have. So basically, that's it. We just now opened up the platform. So the platform is live since a few weeks back. You can sign up and register on it, but you will need that invitation code to be able to enter it. So take a photograph, remember it. The platform is stable, but the builder is still very young. He's been living for about two weeks, and he's continuously improving every day. And the more you use it, and the more feedback you give, I promise you it will get better by the day, and keep on doing that. Um, our models that we deploy, they're also like two days old, so if you find any instabilities, please tell me, and I'll fix it. <laughs> I think that's it for me, and I just want to say that out loud, like, this is one part, but another one is, as we say, information is the only value that we have. Right now, we're giving away all of that value continuously, and I think that infrastructure is one solution to the problem. We need our own social media. That's the biggest issue right now. Every communication that everyone has, every news source that everybody reads is owned by someone else and not the EU. So if any one of you has a good idea for how to solve that, get in touch and I'll try to help you as much as I can. Thank you.